Uh, Larry, thank you so much for being the co-host today, buddy. Would you like to introduce our guest? I um, would. I, I would. I, 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 I believe you would do a better job at it than, <laughs> than, than I would do. Well, let me, let me start off by saying he's probably one of the most principled men I've ever had the opportunity to know. But I'm, I'm going to say a story that I know he has not heard me tell. Hell Uh-oh, before. Oh, Jim, he's getting ready to tell be, This will be fun. This will be interesting. I thought I heard everything. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a product of CMS's school system, so, you know, every now and again, I'm certain they get to tout me, even though they'd rather not claim me. <laughs> so... I remember when I was in high school, there were these group of crazy North Mecklenburg people who, you know, had gotten involved with the school system and decided that North and South Mecklenburg were not properly represented with school construction. And they were led by this guy out of North Mecklenburg, this this, this very intelligent, smart, very charismatic guy who got everybody organized. It was the first time North Mecklenburg really asserted its influence. Um... On, on, on the, the county-wide stage. And that man was Jim Puckett. That's who's with us today. You know, since that time, Jim has been involved in numerous public efforts to make sure that North Mecklenburg and the Lake Norman region have been well represented, um, not just in county government and city government, but also in state government. Besides the fact that he is a successful business owner, runs Electra Painters, somehow, to be honest with you, there are days I wonder how he runs it and still does all the things he's able to do for our community. Um, and we disagree sometimes. We vehemently sometimes disagree on tactics, and sometimes we vehemently disagree on principle or policy. But we believe in what the right thing is to do for Mecklenburg County is, is that it takes good people involved in government to push government forward. So joining us today is my good friend and vice chairman of the Mecklenburg County Commission, Jim Puckett. Thank you. Thanks. It's great to be here. And, he, and he did a good, uh, we did do a good disagree job from time that, to Jim. time, but the mm-hmm. beauty of that is that uh, we're, we're two people that love the debate and realize that you learn from debate. Uh, mm-hmm. Okay. Now, gentlemen, I know this is going to be hard, but this is a business show. Yeah. We do business. That's right. So <laughs> give me 10 minutes to talk business before you guys head into politics. You know, Jim, that, that, that reminds me of something I found out years ago when I first ran mm-hmm. for office, and that was that... Unfortunately for us small business people, we have no choice but to dig into politics. Right. We don't want to. It's just in and all around us, so it's part of what we have to do. And so I tell you guys, for all the small business people out there that are listening, give us our 10 minutes before you dig into that. So, <laughs> so, so Jim, tell us a little bit about uh, Electro Painters, exactly what it is that you do. I, I pulled it up on the Internet, and I was really impressed at the actual – uh, products and services. So I, I'd love to hear about that. Love to talk about it. Don't get a, enough of an opportunity. Electro Painters is a commercial, industrial, electrostatic contracting company. Uh, and our primary uh, customers are manufacturers. Uh, so one of the things that we do is my, my crews go into manufacturing plants. We clean and then repaint manufacturing machinery on a plant floor. Uh, we can spray epoxy paints without getting overspray on any of the surfaces around it. So we can actually uh, paint machinery without getting uh, paint on the machines on either side of it. We do a lot of OEM for manufacturers. We also do storefront. If you see an auto zone that's got red wind emollient, where are the people that come and put that red paint on? We paint miles of chain link fence, oddly enough. But the great thing about electrostatic process, and it's, a, it's about a 50-year-old process now, is that it puts a negative static charge on paint and the paint is drawn to metal, so you're not using air pressure to spray it on. So you can get a factory finish uh, in the field without getting paint on everything around so, you. So, Jim, I've got an older factory, and, I, and I'd mm-hmm. like to, to paint my equipment. Why would I do that? Like, does the look matter? It, it, you, know, you know, it's interesting. That has become a huge difference. I've been doing this for uh, almost 25 years now. And when I first started, it was really more... Uh, machinery that had just completely lost its paint and it was starting to rust or whatever and they painted it. Now most major manufacturers have their own paint color. So if, for example, American Axle has red, white, and blue painting, it's very, very specific. Uh, One of the things is there's continuity there. The other thing that people are finding, manufacturer plants are finding, is it's a maintenance issue. When, When the paint is 
shiny and clean. One, it uh, encourages the, the operators to keep it clean, which is helpful. But you also notice if you have hydraulic leaks, if you have seals that are starting oh, to go bad or whatever, it. so got it's it. there. But the other side of it is environmental. We, uh, when I first started this, this company, we were working with, uh, uh, I'll give them a plug, at that time it was called Getrag Gears, it's now GKN up in Maiden, North Carolina. It was a cave. It was a dark, dirty, nasty place to work. And over the last 20 years, they have completely transformed it. Now it's very bright. They've expanded it. And as a matter of fact, they now have in the middle of their plant, there's a big glass cube where all their engineers work. And so it went from a really depressing place to be to it's like working at Disney World. And that does matter. It Productivity, does matter. efficiency, it's I'm the sure people, that. The people who are there, is, is absolutely it just and, – and it shows that the company cares about their people also. Right. Uh, the other great thing is it uh, enables – uh, customers to come in, and 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 they feel better about the product because they see quality control. So it's it's a it's a big big deal on a lot of different reasons, and we're about the only ones that do what we do. Right. I, I'm curious. Do you do residential stuff? Could I pick no. up the phone and say I got something metal? You know, <laughs> can you paint it for me? We absolutely do not. Uh, that, I, when I say that, we do some um, high end wrought iron work. We will do that, but by and large, it's all commercial and industrial. Uh, I've got a I've got a uh, client that manufactures pumps, right? And they have to be painted because uh, they they go into water and that sort mm-hmm. of stuff. So would they contract with you to do this type of stuff for them? No, they usually will have their own paint line. And so what we do again is uh, now we will do some of that on on prototype runs or something that's a little unusual. We will do we'll do painting sometimes in our shop, but most of what we do is we go out to plants uh, and we will paint. The, the machinery that they have to make whatever it is that they're making. So talk a little bit. I, I always like to ask this question. You, know, you, you don't have to do what Larry did and go back to 1962, but, <laughs> but talk a little bit about how you got started because this is a unique uh, uh, business. It, how did you get started? It's a unique story. I spent 18 years in the men's formal wear business. I rented tuxedos for 18 years. Uh, ended up being an operations manager for a company called Mitchell's Formal Wear, transformed it from literally the days when you would write an order down on a piece of paper with triplicate, tear it into three pieces. I and, used and, them, I remember, for my prom. I got and it. <laughs> that's, and that's what we did. I, was, I ran the operation that would take all those little pieces of paper and hang them on pants and shirts and coats. We transformed that over into the days of, of basically computerized inventory when barcodes first came out. And what happened was that by the time we got done, the job got to be exactly the same thing every single day. There was no challenge. The computer told us what to do. Right. We did it. I got bored with it, started looking around, uh, told my uh, the guy who handled my dry cleaning fluid, oddly enough, I said, I'm trying to find something else if you know of something. And he came by and he said, I have a customer who's looking for somebody. Uh, and it turned out being electro painters. I flew to Indianapolis, uh, spoke with the guy who owned the company. Uh, the South region was bleeding money. He hired me and said, just break even. <laughs> right. uh, I was fortunate. I came in and we actually made money. 14 years later, his company was still bleeding money. Uh, so two of us bought it out of receivership, shut everything down except for the Carolinas and Texas. Uh, my friend took Texas and I took the Southeast. And uh, so that's kind of how I got into it. But it was, but it was novel. It was different. Uh, I love the fact that we we started going into manufacturing plants. It's like being in high school. I get to go in and yeah. see how widgets are made. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's there's no set pattern. Everything I do is basically kind of a, you know, how long do I think it's going to take? How much right. money? So you use your brain in interesting ways. But I get to deal with engineers and plant managers who are really practical people. Uh, and so I enjoy it, and it is a just an amazing before and after. I tell people all the time, the first job I ever had was washing dishes at a Shoney's, and it was the most worthless job in the world. I walked in, there were nine dish pans full of dirty dishes. I washed dishes all day long, and when I left, there were nine <laughs> dish pans full of dirty dishes. You couldn't tell I'd been there at all. This is one of those jobs that you walk in a plant, it is filthy dirty, and you walk out, and it's and it's shiny and clean, and you go, wow, we actually accomplished something. So um, so I enjoy that. But it's, but it's not easy. Being a small business person, getting the financing, pulling it all together right. is, a, is an extraordinarily tricky job. Talk about the, you talk about a service group of people. What, 
what is that staff consist of? Um, do you have multiple teams out, or is it one skilled team that do? No, this we thing? have multiple teams. It varies. One of the great things about Electro Painters uh, when I first when I worked there before I owned it. Uh, we were a national company. We had 24 locations, and we would we would move our crews around. Uh, when uh, we bought the company out, there were actually two of us, and then we brought in a third one. Uh, even though we're now three separate companies uh, in three different regions, we're able to still loan each other uh, employees. But but basically, you normally have about a six man crew that'll come in, and it is literally you walk in there with degreaser. And rags and brushes, and you scrub stuff down, and then mask it off, and then paint it. Uh, and you do all of that in very short periods of time. It's long hours. We're a 24 7, 365 operation. Uh, so, you know. What, but, but if I know anybody that doesn't mind hard work, my friend, I know that to be you for <laughs> sure. And my employees work way harder than yeah, I do. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and we're all getting old. We were talking about that the other day. When we first started this 25 years ago, we were all, you know, in our early 30s. And, <laughs> and, and my employees are still there. And now we're all approaching 60. But it's going to look, but, but my guys just don't age for some reason. I, it must be some <laughs> breathing paint solvent keeps you young, apparently, because they look and act exactly like they did when they were in the 30s. Well, and I'm sure you treat them well because you don't keep employees in this environment without treating them well. Is, uh, that, that's is a lot of it. of it. And, and appreciating uh, the differences. That's probably the biggest failure a lot of small business people have is the inability to kind of move your business around to match your employees, to match the personalities, and then to make up for it in different places. We are clearly a team. My, my company is made up of very unique people, and I have to spend a lot of time explaining why – what you think is crazy is what we need out of the other person. Right, right. Uh, and we work together because of that. One, one last question. Can you talk about the environmental issues? Because I know I sell businesses all the time that have this paint component, and those issues have to be captured. And yeah. how do you do that inside of a plant setting like that? Well, the beauty is with electrostatic, uh, all of the paint, there's no paint particulate. All of the paint is drawn to the metal. It's, it's, it's like you had a handful of magnetic dust that you threw towards metal and it just sucks to the metal. So all you have is basically basically just the solvent vaporing off. And so they, they just, you know, that's not unlike a lot of what they do in manufacturing with oils and that type of thing. So we are containing the paint. Now we recycle all of our solvents. Uh, we have to, it's, it's considered a hazardous waste. So we have to bring all of our, all of unused paint back and we, Ah, uh, government regulations. Uh, and, and there are some rather onerous government rec- regulations, but uh, pack it up and, and, and send it out and contract to have it disposed of and that type of thing. Uh, we, you know, we work very closely with all the safety folks in the plant. Uh, and so you know, one of the reasons that we do a lot of work is because they're finding that it's far better to contract with someone like us to come in and handle it than to have their own maintenance people do it because it is unique. And that's that's where you get in trouble with with an OSHA is when they aren't real sure exactly what to do. Right. And, and we right. do know what to do. What's so it? if somebody wanted to reach you, mm-hmm. uh, we've got a lot of uh, light manufacturing in, in the Iredell County area listening right now. Um, how, how could they reach you, my friend? The easiest way is probably go to the web and that'll link us there. It's www. Electropainters, plural, dot com. Uh, if you just Google electrostatic painting in North Carolina or Charlotte, you will probably find us. Uh, you can always call us at 704 588 7080 7080. And you spell electro, E L E C T R O. Electro painters, two words. Thank you, Jim Pucker. We do appreciate it, my friend. Electro painters.